Hi everyone, this is Gal Julie Makes. I hope you're all doing well. Sorry it's been a while since I've been on the channel. It's been hectic as usual. So um, I'm hopping on because I've been quite inspired recently <clears throat> to combine um, gel plate printing and watercolour. I've very much got into my watercolour of late and um, I do miss doing gel plate printing sort of while I'm doing that. So what I've done, um, I've got a test picture here. And what I've done is I have... Um, gel plate printed some of this sort of uh, cliff scene here and then I've gone over with watercolour just to um, give it sort of like almost like a glaze or a tint and um, I've left a lot of uh, white area where I didn't print the um, or I didn't image transfer so that I can then get some of these effects with the watercolour um, what I've done as well is I've pulled it with matte medium, which I don't usually do with image transfer. I like to tend to pull it with acrylic, but for the purposes of this where I wanted to keep a lot of that sort of um, area blank from a watercolour, and I quite like the sort of resist effect it's had here. So today I'm basically going to show you how I did this. I'm hoping it's going to work because obviously every time you do a different set of prints, especially with image transfer, you never quite know what you're going to get. And I'm using my um, gel press uh, 12 by 14 inch plate and it's very new. So that's one thing I think that can put people off when they start gel plate printing. It is very much um, you have got to condition your plate, use it, use it, use it. And then it becomes easier to get the effects you want. So I've kind of left a little bit of previous work on here. Um, I tend to do that with my plates anyway, which is tricky because my favourite plate is my very first plate, but it's quite hard for you to see that now because um, it's got so much. It's got a very yellow tinge. That's my original very first plate. It's got a very yellow tinge and it's got lots of texture layers on, which thankfully don't actually affect the, the pulls, but... Um, it's difficult for you to see it. So that's why I thought I'd dig out this, um, sorry, just checking, you can see probably, this nine, uh, sorry, 12 by 14 plate. So what I'm gonna do then, first of all, when I pull this, I'm gonna pull it onto very good quality watercolor paper. So um, I like to buy 100% cotton watercolor paper, and I like to work with cold press usually, but for the purpose of pulling um, a gel plate print or an image transfer I do um, want to have a smooth surface so you know we're not missing too much of the actual print so this is Saunders Waterford 100% um, cotton paper and it's uh, hot pressed so it's a smooth quality and this is um, 300 grams um, or 140 pounds okay so if you wanted to use exactly the same paper that's what you'll use and um, I'll show you the watercolours in the second part of the video, but um, I've also used a salt technique here with the watercolour to get this beautiful sort of bloom effect and um, some granulating uh, watercolours just to um, give you sort of separation, a bit of texture, which is what I'm always looking for. I have got some of my own artwork here um, that I'm using today. I don't tend to pull now with magazine transfer because I know there's a lot of hoo-ha online about, you know, copyright, all that sort of thing. So I tend to use my own work now. So this is the same picture, enlarged slightly, and this is one time through the printer and it's using colour toner, even though it's black and white. And that is important because colour toner tends to work a lot better than black and white toner. I don't know exactly why, but it's tried and tested by a lot of people. So if you take a black and white image, you know, and you want to have a go like I have, um, this is one time through the printer, laser printed and colour toner, but it's a black and white print. I always use um, Liquitex Heavy Body Payne's Grey. This one works for me generally. But my issues are that this plate hasn't had much image transfer done on it. And that's where the problem lies. It could bead up, it might just not take very well. I don't want a perfect image, I just want, um, I just want to be able to get some sort of layer so I can paint over the top. So we'll see what we get this time. So I'm just gonna lay down. Now, 
we want I'm not going to fill the whole plate because I'm only doing a certain area if you have a look at that picture what I'm going to do is tear it so I should have done this before I lay that down but what I'm going to do is tear away I'm already getting marks on there look let's make sure my fingers are clean this is a mistake I usually make getting uh, not bothering to you know clean the hands when you've got a bit of random acrylic that's gone on there and then causing chaos for your print so make sure your hands are clean especially when you're going to tear a piece of your work so what I'm going to do let's move this up a bit is I'm going to perforate it like it's a check um, I just want I, I want um, I'm going to get rid of this sky because obviously as I said I want to get some of that lovely watercolour above it. So I'm happy with that. Just going to bray it out my acrylic. And this is that tricky moment. You don't want it too thick. You don't want it too thin. You want it just right. I always call it the Goldilocks moment. And you can already see sort of areas forming where the, the gel plate is like not happy because it's a new gel plate it still needs some bedding in so what I'm going to do is let's just move these out of the way pop them over here I'm just going to spray her off some of the excess as I said you don't want it too thick and we're just going to have to go with those marks on our plate for now I think we're going to leave it at that so it's sort of see-through but it's not too thick either and this is the very much the Goldilocks moment so I've got my print I'm going to lay it down this way and I'm just going to rub it lightly okay and we can give it a pull yep yeah. We pull that away, just make sure it's a bit more here. We, I can see that this is working well. Yeah. You can always lay it back down. As long as you've got that sort of side here that's still stuck down, you can just give it a little bit more of a tiny rub if you want a bit more detail to come through. There we go. It's not the it's not the clearest image, but that's fine. And then what I'm going to do is go in with um, a baby wipe and just get rid of that excess black that I've placed down. Because obviously, you know, you, it's hard to be exact. And if you wanted to get like quite an unusual peering through something effect, you could... Oops you could leave this sort of almost like an aperture around it if you wanted to it's not the effect I'm going for though so I'm going to sort of try and get as much of that off as I can because I want to be able to put the watercolour underneath you see it's okay to leave some of the black at the bottom to be honest I will leave a little bit of that black there I did that on my previous print so that's fine I just want to get rid of most of it so I can add more. There we go, I'm happy with that. Okay, so what I'm going to do then is let that dry and then I'll come back to it and add a layer of matte medium. Okay, I'm back. It is very dry now, so that's good. And what I'm going to do is make sure I have got my watercolour paper ready. Um, so remember, smooth surface, and hopefully that will pick up nicely. And then I'm going to lay down some matte. Me well, this is so this is Dina Wakeley gel medium, soft gel matte medium, and I'm just going to lay some down on top. And I don't want to, like I said, I don't really want to um, get too much around the edge because I want to be able to use that area for watercolour and I will try and avoid some of the areas as well where I've got gaps here so I'm just going to kind of roll her over 
certain areas. Obviously, you can always, you know, move a bit of it around with your finger if you need to. And I'm just going to put a bit of matte medium into the sky just so that I will get that um, sort of resist effect. So I'm hoping that is enough. And then we're going to lay down our paper. And I want to make sure I've got quite a, li a lot of area for the sky. So I'm going to lay it about there. And then I'm going to brayer it with my big brayer. And this is quite thick paper, so it should handle being on the plate to dry a little bit. So it's about 300 grams, so it's much sturdier than your average sort of copier paper. And we want that good quality paper because we want to be able to, you know, get the watercolour to work really well. And the great thing about this is that we don't need to have that really sort of perfectly sharp image transfer. Uh, we're just looking for a transfer that's going to be a good guideline for us when we're trying to capture a bit of a sort of photo reel quality in the piece. There we go, so quite pleased with that actually, that's turned out better than I thought it was going to, so that's sort of in the light, and if I put a bit of shadow on you can sort of see the detail even more. So there we've got the uh, the pull, obviously you know, lacking in some detail, but because we're going to work this with this in watercolour then, um, it's a great starting point for those that are maybe sort of scared just to get out there and just paint this scene from scratch um, and it like I say it almost gives it sort of like a photo real quality because it's based on a photo you're just building up the sort of tint layers over the top so I'll show you how I do the watercolour next okay so we're at the stage where we're ready to paint so this is like I say this is the original uh, concept so we've got um, sky with watercolour and a, the salt effect which is very brilliant for creating blooms and this sort of beautiful texture so we need to put that salt into the sky once the paint is um, just about damp it can't be too dry it can't be too wet because that bloom effect won't work so it's quite a tricky one and then um, obviously we can see some of the texture layers through here this, like I said, is a very sort of granulating paint anyway, so that means the pigments separate out, so it's got more than one pigment in it. Um, it's uh, dusk yellow, that one is called, and so it's got more than one pigment in it, and as as you apply the water, the, um, the pigment will separate out, so you get these beautiful sort of effects. I have added a little bit of salt in there as well, which is like these sort of little spots you can see. Um, but they've not really, I obviously put them in when they were quite damp, and it's not really kind of created that bloom effect but the texture still looks beautiful so um, obviously like I said it really does depend on the paper that you're using as well because if you're using sort of cheap watercolour paper you're not necessarily going to get these um, these nice effects as well so I'm not really going to be able to fit my full palette on I just tend to use like a melamine plate to do my painting um, so I'm just going to lay down some colour so I've got um, so the Dusk Yellow is by Rembrandt and this is just such an amazing colour so I'm going to lay some of that down on my palette and also I'm going to use a mop brush so that's just going to give me sort of quite a, a nice general wash for the sky so let's get some indigo down. And, you know, if you tend to use a bigger brush, then it, it gives you that sort of more sort of even texture for the sky. So I'm just loading up my brush with water. I'm going to just pop down a little bit of water on the top. Um, annoyingly, this brush likes to, again, spend a bit more money on your brushes. This was quite a cheap one that I grabbed. Um, but if we lay down a bit of water on the top there, then that... We'll just give wet and wet with the watercolour, just gives us a quite interesting sort of sky um, sort of texture. But obviously we'll be adding some of the salt into it anyway. And I'm just going to sort of brush that, swoop that in. 
wet and wet and then we should be able to get that we're getting that not really getting that so uh, resist this time but if you get a bit like that if you get too close then I would just recommend wetting your brush and just sort of see if you can uh, ah yeah we are getting that resist there look so we're getting that sort of resist effect where the matte medium was so yes that's fine I just want to maybe move a bit away from that house so I'm just going to sort of pull that off like that there we go um, we can add a bit more water if we want to give it a bit more of a sort of cloudy effect and then we can dab some of that away maybe or maybe going a bit darker on that bit because I don't want it to look so, quite so jagged on that resist bit there. And then the whole the whole area doesn't have to be blue. So you can leave some gaps at the top there. But I'm just going to, I think I'm just going to basically cover most of it. If you look at this one, most of this one's sort of covered because we've got that resist area anyway that's going to lighten it up. Right, okay, so I'm happy with that. So I'm going to clean my brush off. And then what I'm going to do is uh, work into the actual paint in here. So I'm going to get a smaller brush. So I've got a Pro Art brush here. This is a small little brush. These are pretty good quality. And I'm just going to go in with the Payne's Grey on this one because I printed with Payne's Grey it makes sense to me to actually paint some of this detail in Payne's Grey so I'm not going to wet the actual paper before I paint this bit I'm going to just wet the actual paint so and I'm just going to go in and just accentuate certain areas a bit more so Okay, so I'm just sort of following, following the print really. And I'm kind of going for that sort of textural look. So I'm not just painting block, I'm kind of, um, I'm dabbing, dabbing the paints grey on. So it sort of gives us that sort of textural feel. And I quite like it when I can sort of start seeing seeing the print through it so I'm just going to follow that a bit more so you know just keep messing with the the consistency of your um, paint and water till you're happy that you can start seeing through it just don't want to lose I don't really want to lose some of that sort of sharper detail but I might just accentuate certain bits that aren't standing out as much as they could and again like I say this is a, a good technique if you are sort of scared of just getting out there and having a go at painting a building or it just means you can sort of start to build up on top of your existing print. So I hope you're enjoying this video so far. Um, I didn't really want it to get too long, but then I also like to show you and talk through as much of the process as possible to, you know, help you out as much as I can. Um, this is just a really nice technique just to kind of get you inspired and um, get you maybe giving it a given art a go on a slump day when... Um, you know, you just want to get something done in your sketchbook, but you don't want to start completely from scratch. Now, there's probably some areas of this sky, actually. This is one thing to tell you about. Um, if you're adding the salt, you've got to kind of watch it. So there's some areas here now that I've probably missed. Um, I might still catch it a little bit over this side. Yeah, I think we're okay, actually. This area here is way too wet because it's shiny. There are some areas though that it should work on. Uh, so it's just a question of kind of timing again. It's a bit like that Goldilocks moment. It's kind of can't be too too wet, can't be too dry. So I'm gonna have to wait for this bit to dry more. Basically, if you don't get the timing right, it, nothing will happen. 
it will just um it will just sort of sit there and just end up getting stuck to your paint and then you might get a slight blobby effect but uh, it would just end up giving you a darker sort of paint area rather than giving you those lo lovely blooms so I've just focused on that area for now and then we'll leave that to dry and we can go back to painting this area so I'm just going to go back and just get a bit more of this texture in let's see that's too dark but you might decide well, that's quite quite a nice bit maybe of shaded sort of shrub area so you know it's, it's fine you just experimenting to see what you like really because we're going to need darker areas to make it look more natural so I'm just working in some more colour One of the things to bear in mind as well with watercolour is that it will always dry back lighter than you actually see it. So once you've left it to dry, it will it will lighten off. So that might, that's worth bearing in mind. And here I'm just adding in those telephone masks that I lost in the original pull. So you can add more detail wherever you like. Do you see the blooms forming already? Look, you've got that slight. Let's just lift it, bring it a bit closer. So you've got those sort of nice blooms forming this side. And what we can do is if we want to, we can tilt the paper if we want to get a sort of sweeping effect and it almost sort of drags, sorry, almost sort of drags those blooms down to give you a slightly different effect. So feel free to tilt your salt as you're going and then we get already getting like a formation here look where it's uh, going up to that resist. So... I'll play it flat again for now and then we might be able to start getting some more salt in these areas now because they're starting to look more damp than wet and what we can also do as well is we can get a brush like a sort of fan brush like this one and my water's not great there so I might just spray a little bit of water in here and we can just sort of dip our brush in the water and we can flick so if there's areas where you haven't been able to get the salt on because it might be too dry you can just flick and you'll get quite big blooms from the water laying on top like that so they're coming out even more there look so that's another way of doing it um, right next job so I'm going to try and do um, some dusk yellow here and that is obviously this area at the bottom here so that lovely textural sort of paint so again I'm going to um, lay down lay down some water now my water is not the cleanest it I should go and clean this really but I'm kind of time pressured so I'm just going to lay down some water at the bottom here it's got a slight blue tint but I don't think it's going to stand out too much so that's fine but obviously if you've got time guys because you're not filming then you can go and change your water or just maybe have a backup water so you don't really have to even worry about that uh, careful with what paints on your fingers as well uh, what I'm going to do is dip into some of that lovely dusky yellow so again I'm doing wet into wet so we're gonna just dab this on and already you can see look you know you're getting a sort of texture just from how you're using your brush um, I'll just go in there and that's helping the fact that we've already got some water laid down so I can go in lighter I can go in dark I can kind of you know creep up into the hill there if I want and can you see how it's already starting to run so I can encourage that now, I'm not happy with this bit so I think I'll just let's get a bit more water on that
but you can blend it in. And you can see it's already starting to sort of separate out there, which looks very nice. Let it run, add a bit more water, or we could spray a bit of water, so we could flick a bit of water on there with that fan brush, get it moving. And it's starting to look like real texture we've got there. So let's get some salt in some of this area, just to imitate sort of, you know, flowers. That's going to dry, that's too wet, so certain areas will come out better than others. That won't come out. This is probably a bit too dry, some of this area. But we'll see how that comes out. And then for the middle layer, I can't get... Oh, that was hard to get that lid off. So I'm using my Schmincke Quinacridone Gold Hue here. And I'm just going to wet that a little bit. Try not to do that too close to your work because you can completely ruin it. Now this is a really sort of beautiful colour but it's I'm going to mix it a little bit with the dusk yellow just to sort of take out some of that bright tone. And we're just going to bring in some of that. Now see it's looking quite bold at this point, but I quite like that. I think what I'm going to do is just go back in with a little bit of the dusk yellow uh, just to give it some darker tones in some of those areas where the print is underneath we don't want it to look like it's all sort of sand so and again I might bring a bit more um, Payne's grain to that sort of section there so now, on my original picture, I had more of a defined dark area down here, so I probably shouldn't have taken off quite so much of that that black at the bottom. So I'm probably just going to bring some of that in. So let's just go for a bit of a bit of the Payne's grey, maybe sort of down here. To give us a sort of another dimension. Probably put a little bit of salt in this area, but I'm going to bring in. Let's bring in my small brush. Just go for a little bit of that Payne's grey again. Just, just to bring out some slightly darker areas. So you can keep on working at this as long as you want to really, till you're happy with the, the end result. Right, you can see that salt effect now is sort of bringing bits down, which I'm liking. So I'm just going in with some lines with my car, but I'm, again, I'm just damping my paint down a little bit and then just kind of coming in 
with that sort of pop of colour. And that colour that I'm using there is Burnt Sienna, and that's one of my favourites. I tend to use it in all my watercolour pieces. And also the uh, store card is also a favourite texture tool of mine. So if you've got an old store card that you can cut up, definitely recommend having a go and using that for mark making, both with watercolour and on your gel plate. Obviously, just be careful because it's got sharp edges, so you don't want to cut into your gel plate, but it should be absolutely fine. Um, so that's about it. I'm happy with this piece um, in the end, and I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you have and you haven't seen my videos before or you're not subscribed, please do subscribe to the channel. If you hit the bell and all notifications, that will let you know whenever I've got a new video coming out. And I'm always doing experimental videos on the gel plate, and um, basically I'm always uh, looking to create new textures and things. So um, I hope you'll get some enjoyment out of more videos. There's a general playlist for gel plate videos on here as well. And um, do drop me a comment if you've enjoyed the video or if you want to give this a go yourself. I'd love to hear from you and have a chat. So take care of yourselves guys and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.